hello everybody and welcome back to Final Fantasy XII, Zodiac Age. I don't think I've said that full title ever, but there you go. <laughs> we, let's check the map. Still the same thing, the Sun Chris. What an interesting name. <laughs> I think this is the way I'm supposed to go. The tower wrought by hands on dying, heaven bound path. It was made by the old, the ocular, I almost said Okokra. That's a Zelda character from Twilight Princess. Well, it's like, like it's a species? It's the little chicken, like a bald chicken thing that talks, has a human face. Bald chicken with a human face is terrifying, honestly. <laughs> you, power, wisdom, mist, I told you, power, wisdom, well, and strength, but the freaking Triforce and the ocular, yeah, uh-huh. Conspiracy theories. You who master power, wisdom, mist, the tower secrets are for you and you alone. Claim them. To heaven's last height you now ascend. Chosen, now know the reason. Know now the reason of your choosing. I feel like they're talking to Ash, but here we are. This better be the right thing to do. <laughs> I'm very mad if it isn't. Oh, put my keyboard on my lap. So you guys don't have to hear me tippy tapping. Ooh, it's the top. So this is the sun. Top Christ. of the tower. Oh wow, that's pretty. Oh, I thought that was like a part of it, but maybe that's just like a binding. Or is the sun crit? That's like the physical rays of it. She's got two swords. King Wraithwall stood here with this sword. He cut the sun crit. And took its power in his hand. Two decisions to, or one decision to make of two. But you're going to use the sword to destroy the Sunchrist. Aren't you, Ash? <sighs> Don't interrupt me, Vaughn. Yeah, uh... Oh my gosh, this is fancy! Oh, is this Vinat maybe? Or is she activating something? Vinat is a god like being. Or maybe this is more tower stuff. I like it. I. Magic towers, honestly, I love them. I love them. Are you a. Are you a god being? Holy moly. Oh, now, now they can see him. You want revenge? You would have me use the stone? I don't think he would. You would have me destroy the Empire? Is this my duty? Is this what you want? I cannot. Oh. Why do you hesitate? Oh! Take what is yours. I forgot him. The Chris is a blade. It was meant for you. Wield it. Avenge your father. Why are you trying to cause trouble? Yes. It was I who wore Bashi's face. Who cut down the life of Delmasca. Lady Ash, your father's murderer is here. You and Rex! I slew your king. I slew he your doesn't country. care about him. Do these deeds not demand vengeance? He wants a war. He wants her to make trouble so he can kill her. Yes. Good. Find your wrath. Take up your sword. Fight and serve those who died before you. Ooh. A judge magister there was. Two years passed. He took in his hand the Midlight Shard, stolen from Nabratia, and used it not knowing what he did. And Nabudis was blown away. Oh. Said all this of him to learn the Nethersite's true power. That man swore never to let such terrible power be used again. He forsook his Judas's plate and his name. Whoa! <gasps> Whoa! Judge Zekt. Oh my gosh! It's been too long, Gabranth. 
Reach out your hand, Lady Ash. But remember, that which you must grasp is something beyond revenge, something greater than despair. Something beyond our reach. Try as we might, Gabranth. History's chains bind us too Ooh, tightly. Oh, this is so fancy! <laughs> so, Radas knows of no. regret. We cannot escape the past. This man is living proof. What is your past, daughter of Damaska? Did you not swear revenge? Do the dead not demand it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. I can't believe her lover would actually want that. I think she's being manipulated. <sighs> what? Oh my gosh. What is what is passing between the eyes here? Is she having to let him go? I think she's might have it done. Yeah. My prince, our time was short. Yet I know this. You are not the kind to take base revenge! What? <sighs> yeah, she's being manipulated. The wrestler I knew is gone. Oh. You are our saint, Tashelia Banagan. You must use the Nethersite. You must be the one to straighten history's weave. I am no false saint for you to use. Ooh, nice! Ash. The lines! In all Dalmasca's long history, not once did we rely on the Dusk Shard. Our people resolved never to use it, though their need might be dire. That was the Dalmasca I wanted back. To use the stone now would be to betray that. Dang. I will destroy the Sun Crist. I will discard the stone. You claim no need of power? She's got the What of your broken kingdom shame? She's got power of friendship. The dead demand justice. You're wrong. Huh? <gasps> what would change? I can't help my brother now. My brother's gone. He's dead. Even with power, we cannot change what is past. What is done, is done. Yet without power, what future can you claim? What good a kingdom you cannot defend? Then I will defend queen and kingdom both. <sighs> ha! Defend! You! You who failed Landis and Almaska, what can shame hope to keep safe? Your shield is shattered. Your oaths poison those you would protect. Oh my gosh, he's um Darth Maul. <laughs> he's Darth Maul. Anyway, holy cow, Redis used to be a he's a sky pirate and he used to be a judge and he did something that he destroyed an entire country. Let's see, I think that's, that's, that's what I was picking up, and that's what he had brought up to her before. Is that he knows what having even a fraction of the Nethysite's power, and like its, its capacity, capability, its capacity or ability for destruction. And then the regret that one has after that, even if you think you're doing, like, and I think for him he wasn't 100% sure what was gonna happen, but it did seem like he said Dr. Sid wanted to know what would happen with that so he was following orders and then he regretted it big time oh and that's why it seemed like maybe him and dr sid knew each other maybe dr sid actually knows that he's a former judge um anyway i'm also curious because like we had the talk of the brother with ron like ron's brother rex i'm curious if there's what the interplay is between these two brothers right gabranth and bosh like you know, Vaughn's brother's dead. He can't change that. 
but Bosh and Laran, they're still alive. Like, but I don't know if you can salvage. I mean, it's a it's a video game, it's a story, so maybe you can salvage the relationship, and it's you know, kind of anime-ish. So power of friendship and all that, power of love, familial or whatever kind of love. But dang, and then the lines, like honestly, like some of these some of these lines, especially Redos, he's been so like eloquent, effervescent. Effulgent, one might say. <laughs> like, I am the. This is such a well written game. I have no idea what I'm doing. We're gonna die. <laughs> he began casting Protect. Let's see. Stop attacking her just because she freaking tried to cast a spell on you. Of course, he's immune to everything. Freaking, now I have to be Pinello. And the battle is gonna be very reminiscent of freaking. Oh, jeez. Um. What do you call it? Dragon Age 2 again. More Dragon Age 2, where you're running around trying to escape the Aeroshock. Stop casting shell and stuff. Mid fight. Stop. This is so dumb. Hear me, boss. Oh, okay. Do not think killing the Kingslayer will win you back your honor. When you abandon home and kin, your name was forever stained with blood. Well, what have you done? I. This stain is mine to bear, but I will bear it willingly, knowing that I did all that I could for hope. Breen and strut as you like. In the end, we are the same. He's like the most humble guy. Thirsting carrying birds. Hellbent on revenge. No. I don't think I don't think that he's like that at all. Like Bosch is one of the most humble guys I have seen in this series. Okay, maybe he'll stop bothering me. Bothering Pinello, rather. Oh, I forget. Pinello won't attack if I'm controlling her for whatever reason. He ready circle of judgment. The power of friendship, guy. You're on your own. Like, you're alone. So you, too, would leave your debts unpaid. Enough of this. I can bear no more. Oh, please. You disappoint me, Gabranth. What? He trusted you. When you bared steel against the princess, you forswore your obligations to your emperor. You shame yourself and make mockery of Lord Lass's trust. You are unfit to serve him a sword or shield, and so I release you from that service. Your presence is neither required nor welcome. Oh boy, taking away his only reason for existence? Gabranth! You are only a tool of this Venar. How quaint. We are allies. The Acuria give men power as a master feeds his dog. It is meant to tame us. How well you've resisted their wile. By turning your back on their stones, you give us free hand to write our own history. And at what price? Damascus freedom for your nethocyte? I shall not suffer you to have it. The sun crispy damned. <laughs> Be sure that it is. For what other purpose do you think you brought us here? But, my lady, I would have you stay your Acurian sword. The sun crisp is glutted with mist, and so precious a thing must not be squandered. Let us use the stone! Finish this for now! Um e uh Like what did what did we expect, you know? He, he, this is what he wanted all along. <laughs> Shards of Nephysite, cocoon of the sun crest, spill forth your mist upon this evil east. Let sin sky be awash in it that Bahamut may come and drink his fill. Now who? <laughs> I can't keep track of everybody. <laughs> I 
I feel like we should be doing something. Oh, I guess we're having a hard time standing up. Uh-oh, Balthier, no! Casts it back the shadow of a Curian design. Testament that man's history shall be his alone! Oh god, like imagery. You laid your nether sight for this. You mimic the Acuria stone for what? To become a god yourself? On whose shoulders better to stand than those of the would-be gods? Ah, such high hopes I once had, but you ran and ran and they with you. Alas, the hour of your return is late. Come, family, revel in the glory of my triumph. What? Was that his name? That was a word. That was a terrible name. <laughs> was that Paul Thayer's original name? Oh my goodness, Framran. <laughs> Anyway, if both of your dies, I will throw myself out a window. I do apparently have... Not apparently. Factually, it is statistically proven that I have a thing for fictional men who are bound to death. Um, it's actually uncanny and, and weird because most of the time I don't know they're dying. And then I pick the one that I like and it turns out they're dying. And we're gonna die in the future, like, much sooner than anybody else. <laughs> it's weird. Oh, let's see. I don't think I have anything that'll be useful against him. I should turn off that. I thought, yeah, it's a... Uh, it might have worked, but... It was only a miss and not an immune. Oh, jeez. Gatling gun! What? Where did that come from? Where did that come from? What? Why did you just put a Gatling gun out of nowhere? Oh my gosh. This is going way too easily, and either I'm overleveled, <sighs> which I don't think. Behold the manufactured nether Or we're gonna do this. The fruit of our power and knowledge. See what the stone of man is capable of. Witness its power with your own eyes. Fan it to me. Oh, okay. Maybe the fam fam name was like a demon name or a summon. It's a summon, maybe. Uh, I, that's unfair. I don't know how to do summons. <laughs> I mean, I do, but I don't know how they work, really. Oh, Dr. Sid is immune. Okay. Then we attack Fam here. We're doing damage to it, even though I can't see a health pool. Oh, is it below it? Maybe it is. I might try to find it up above. It looks cool. Dr. Sid is still attacking us, though, which is a bummer. <gasps> what? Oh my gosh. That's not a Gatling gun, that's like a rocket launcher. This is very visually... But then you get back into the fight and it's like... Pew 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 pew. <laughs> we are. It's almost dead. Eek. Magic sealed, surrounding him fades. He's no longer immune to magic. So is he not immune to ma maybe I thought he was immune to physical damage. Maybe it changed after the first phase. Whoopsie daisy. It's fine though. We want to get rid of this. This thing. Okay, good. Haha, -ha, no longer immune to physical damage and magic. Okay, good. Please stop. Please stop pulling out the Gatling gun. I am curious if, like, we kill all this stuff and take out the Nethocyte if he'll like revert back to his old self or if this is just a natural evolution of like man's greed you know what I mean
like his greed, not like men. Like, I mean, it could be kind of metaphorical, but like, yeah. His desire, it's like a warlock. It's essentially what he is, right? It's like a warlock. He, uh, he desired, he's a scientist, you know, always pushing the boundaries. Um, an old trope, but a goodie in a lot of ways. Like, it can be done poorly, but like, it's, it can be very interesting or very telling. Um, but he essentially made a deal with the devil for a uh, not a Freudian, a Faustian bargain, potentially. I was like, oh no. Man, he looks great for everything that he went through. Oh my gosh, we have another summon. We took it from him. This reminds me of Fairy Tale, the anime, manga. And the woman who collects the zodiac, the zodiac signs, hey, it works. She like collects the keys for all the zodiac sign creatures and they're her like friends and she summons them for help in battle. Ugh. Let him by, Fena. It is done. Ah, uh, how I have enjoyed these six years. The pleasure was all mine. Stay out of range, at least. Was there no other way? Huh. Spend your pity elsewhere. If you are so set on running, hadn't you best be off, fool of a pirate? Oh, Man. Complicated family relationships, am I right? Neither one of them hated the other. And that makes it harder. You know? Friend? Friend! Oh my gosh, I was wondering if she was gonna be okay with all this mist. The mist burns to bursting. It beats the cocoon. You gotta break it. Sunchrist bursts. You must run as far as you can. Easy, friend. Don't you do it. Oh my gosh, I am gonna cry. Hadn't you best be off? That's what a sky pirate does. You fly, don't you? Oh, don't rip my heart out. I suppose you'd better hang on then. I love them so much. Ash, the sword. We had to stop it. <sighs> that was just. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like I've tried to be like they could just be friends. So you can have <laughs> good friendships, you know, like that. But I want to think that they're lovers. <laughs> Why do they have both swords? You must quit this place. It's reacting. I've not seen its like before. Nay, never this Nay. hard. Never such threat impendent. For Nabodis. Oh, snap. He's gonna... Redis. What? Redis, no! I, Judge Magista, condemn you to oblivion! He's so cool! No! No! Well, and if it sets off like a whole explosion... Like, everybody in that tower is gonna be in trouble. I loved that, though. 
well, you but shouldn't you fly? Well, you better hang on then. I'm gonna just. Uh, <laughs> I would. <laughs> I did say that I thought if they were going to die, they would die together. Like, that was one of the options. Oh, good. She's still there. I saw Franz Bunny ears. Oh, my gosh. Everybody's there except for Red Ox. Wow, they really did change the, the animation for that cutscene. I will, I will now have the... Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 97. I am really, I am sad. I mean, it makes, okay, so the, the whole thing, what is it that they like, um, what is the word? Um, redemption by death is a common one. It's not one I'm super fond of. I prefer redemption, and I've been said it many times before. I prefer redemption arcs where whoever has to be like wants to be redeemed has to spend the rest of their life striving to like fix or to make the world a better place despite what they've done, you know. Um, but I will admit it is thematic here, and like we didn't really like we found out he was the one who did this terrible thing pretty soon. Like pretty quick before he died so it's like the whole the full impact is maybe like if we had known longer but maybe in like seeing him struggle it would be like a bigger impact but i'm still like holy cow and like he was i already i said before all the before i was like he's so well spoken like i really like his character and now he's gone but i'm not gonna lie i'm really sad i'm really glad both the year is alive so <sighs> okay anyway oh my gosh and like the scene between Balthier and his dad, oh, that was, I mean, like three short lines, but heartrending. Like, you could see it in their faces. Like, the fact that they still loved each other made it more difficult. Oh my gosh, we're into like, I have to, okay. Blast the sea, blast the waves, blast it all. I don't believe he's gone. He's read us. How could he die? Hadn't you noticed he's been searching for a place to die all along? Dang. Well, if I, if I had known him better, maybe I would also see that. But I didn't get to. Lord Redis weren't the sort of man to run away from his problems by dying. He weren't. How could he abandon this town? You'd have him regret passing. You'd have him suffer and wail for eternity. That's not what I meant. No, if he's gone, then he just should rest in peace. Gods know he deserves it. Then let him. You've time to mourn and curse him, and then you've certainly time to carry on what he started. If you don't wish an eternity of regret on him, then let's do our part here and know he's watching over us, satisfied. Honestly, I do like this take sometimes. Not always. Sometimes. On. Don't grieve your loved ones. Don't, like, curse them. Don't keep them around because they wouldn't want you. Like, if they truly loved you, they wouldn't want you to suffer that one. Like, I think, you know, you have to understand, like, people are going to go through, like, a suffering, like, phase, you know, but to wallow in it, and to, to the point where, like, ostensibly, potentially, you're, like, keeping, you're causing them pain, you know, like, I think it would be hard enough if there's, you know, if you have any sort of sentience after you die, like, it's hard enough to move on and leave people behind that you love, even just, like, when you leave, like, physically, like, you know, like, you like, oh, like, driving away from, like, a family home and waving goodbye, hard enough. You know, but the idea of not causing your loved ones who have passed on to grieve, I think, at least for me, I think would be helpful in and has been helpful in some instances and in at least mitigating grief, you know, and not wallowing in it, you know, so. But each has their pace and their preference. Satisfied, Redis, we'd be lucky if we earned and not disappointed from him, but I suppose everything depends on us now. The three... Musketeers. Us and Vaughn's crew. Oh, you like me now, hmm? Vaughn's crew also, really? The main characters here have been Ash, Bosch, and Balthier, like hardcore. I do wish Fran could have played a little bit more um, front. Like, she had very important roles to play as, like, sort of like a mystic translator, um, like wise and like wise person kind of in a way you know um 
But I wish she could have had a little bit more because it does seem like for like the Althaeer, Bosch, and Ash got a lot of like either one of them could have been the actual main character, and I would have been like, yep, that makes perfect sense, <laughs> you know. Um, Vaughn being the main character, a little silly. R, since when have you trusted that lot with more than swab in the deck? I wasn't blind. I saw the faith that Redis had in them. I'm sure they'll discover what it is they need to do in a short time. Speaking of which, did you tell them about our guests? Is it Larson? They should be meeting up in the man's as we speak. Who was that odd fellow anyway? Squawk. Oh, no, I bet you it was the guy. I was just thinking when Redis. Because like, I was thinking, oh, yeah, Redis is so well-spoken. I also thought of that other guy with the glasses that we met, um, like the sunglasses. That it was like, I, I'm like an ostentatious type of guy who was like wanting to like create an alliance with Ash. I wonder if it's that guy. I was wondering what happened to him. Al Sid? Aha! We let ourselves in. I was right! The situation is building some haste, you understand? You understand? <laughs> How did you know where we were? We blew things up. <laughs> My little birds. They tell me many, many things. I love this guy. <laughs> My lady, the war begins now. Oh my gosh, is this like halfway? <sighs> then you were unsuccessful in stopping the Rosarian fleet? I used a variety of methods. Methods. Went according to plan until it came time to request withdrawal of our <laughs> most devoted generals. In their enthusiasm for war, our great military leaders went behind my back straight to Marquis Sandor's resistance. The Resistance? During training, a division of the Resistance ignored their orders and disappeared. They were next found exchanging broadsides with the Imperials over old Nabradia. Why would they go there? They were asking to be found. You misunderstand. Those ships must surely belong to Rosarian Division. They may have joined Ondor's resistance forces as patriots or even mercenaries, but in reality they are regulars of the Rosarian army under direct command of our war pavilion. This fifth column has invaded Imperial airspace and provoked a response. Oh, this is Unable complicated. To abandon them, His Excellency the Marquis was obliged to give his main fleet the order to attack. And the battleground is the Lamasca. No! Should this fight drag on, Rosaria will enter the fray. The defense of Dalmasca is their excuse, and we will have a war between empires. Correct. They will bide their time waiting to strike until the empire has spent itself against the Marquis, but then he will crush them and the Marquis both between his hands. Vane holds the Dusk Shard no longer. His advantage is lost. Vane has advantages enough. Yeah. He stands on higher ground, and my birds tell me he has awoken something quite large. What? Bahamut, <gasps> Lord of the Sky. That's the name he said earlier! There was a stirring in the mist, in the direction of Ridorana, I am told. Bahamut awoke soon after this. It is the mist that came before the Christ was undone. It breathed life into this Bahamut. If Rathus had not stopped it when he did, how much more mist might it have drunk? All went according to Dr. Sid's designs. Yes, the man's last great accomplishment, I fear. And so it falls to me to put an end to the thing. You! Vane commands Bahamut himself? He comes to Rabanaster. Then I will defend Delmasca and stop this Bahamut. This is my charge. That's our charge, actually. It's our home. It belongs to us all. I mean, she's not wrong. I love how expressive everybody's faces are. <sighs> You're not alone! Power of friendship! Yeah! And my charge is to hinder and delay this Rosarian invasion for as long as is possible. I will do what I can. Ah, yes. When this unpleasantness is done, you must <laughs> come to Rosari. <laughs> I will take you to the Amber Vale of Clan Mark Grace. Such things I will show you. Until then, I will be waiting. Oh, he is so charming. Bothier. <laughs> Okay, 
okay, actually, I can't tell. I keep forgetting both of you. I can't tell if he's like falling in love with Ash or if he's longtime lovers with, maybe he is longtime lovers with Fran, but like things, you know, I don't know, people move on, you know, things change. I on that guy has <laughs> string riding up his butt. It's right there, right in the center of the screen. What the heck? He's got like a thong on the outside of his pants. Oh my gosh. Okay. Honestly, if that scene with Fran and Balfire was just them being like maybe even like former lovers who have just like eased into like being like, you know, the truest of friends. Or maybe they like the truest of friends and they always have been. Like, it was incredibly sweet. And I'm gonna, and I don't care. Like, if they're, if it doesn't mean that they weren't lovers, like, to have a friendship like that, where you can, like, hold somebody that tenderly and not have it be, like, a, like a lover's thing, but, like, a true friendship thing, that just, it's gonna make me cry too, you know? But that was the most reaction I've seen from Balthair about Ash being flirted. Like, I wasn't sure if he was just being, like, charming. It's hard to tell, like, with a with him and Ash. But, and then boy Fran was looking at him. That was so funny. She was like, oh, you have a challenger. I was literally just about to say, this guy is, like I was saying, this guy is so charming. I was like, and, now, like, Balthair has some competition for the charm. But I forgot that he's been kind of, like... He's not even been making the moves on Ash. They've just been having, like, philosophical discussions. And uh, to me, I'm like, yep, that's that's great. That's great grounds for, like, starting a relationship, honestly. <laughs> like, oh. And I'm first I'm like, Sky Pirate and, like, a princess. I'm like, I don't know. Like, the society will be, like, weird about it. But technically, this does the thing that, like, a lot of actually, like, um... Asian media, I, I say Asian because it happens in like Korean and Chinese as far as I know, um, but especially in Chinese, and this is actually something, it's actually something I'm not a huge fan of, is that when it's like a princess and a pauper story potentially, um, or like a Cinderella, not even a Cinderella story, um, it is kind of like a Cinderella story, where like the one who is this like plucky upstart, like a pirate or like a vagabond of some sort, or, or she's like a peasant girl, this happens a lot in Chinese drama, she's a peasant girl, um, you know, and she falls in love with the prince and everyone's like, no, you can't be together because she has a bad bloodline. Oh, wow, crazy, turns out she's actually the bastard daughter of some duke or prince or emperor or like noble person or whatever, you know? She almost always have some, has a, like a sort of like noble lineage behind her. And honestly, I, and I know that there are stories that don't do this, but it gets, I'm like, why can't we do that? Like, why can't we change it up more? Like, why can't we actually be like, love wins? Like, and who you are as a person is more important than your bloodline. Because as soon as the bloodline thing comes out, it's like, oh, good, great, it's just fine, it's fine then. And I'm like, no, like I don't know, like make I want the story where like they in taking the Chinese dramas that I watch, for example, like the guy, the prince, like falls in love with her and she's a peasant woman and he's like, screw you guys. Like I get that there's like a whole like, there's like political machinations, you know, blah blah blah, and he has to do things to, like protect his country and make alliances and blah blah blah. But if the woman is like talented, smart, like a warrior and a scholar, you know, she brings all these things to like the table, like it doesn't matter what her bloodline is, as long as she can contribute and like be like a the mother of the empire or whatever, you know, be like the protector of the empire or the I don't know, like, some sort of, like, savior of the Empire. It shouldn't matter what her bloodline is. Like, it should be her deeds that speak for her, not some, like, blood count thing. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, that was kind of... Anyway, my tangent... It was because I was like, oh, both of you wouldn't maybe necessarily work because she's a sky pirate and she's a princess and blah, blah, blah. But I'm always, like, for the most part, I'm like, just do it anyway. Like... You know, maybe just like love, like out of like you know, oh she's hot, he's hot. She doesn't like he or she doesn't really bring much to the table, like for like a line, not alliances, but like um, like any sort of like smarts. Like their only thing going for them is that they're pretty. You know, it's like okay, maybe I could see that being a bit problematic. But usually, like at least in the Chinese dramas, when it's the guy, the prince, and like the girl who's like a commoner, she has like a ton of talents and is super cool. And and it only. It's okay. It's only okay when it's her bloodline checks out in the end. But anyway, both that year though, the the big thing for me and stuff were like vagabonds going into palaces is like 
Vagabonds don't generally do well in palaces. Like, they don't necessarily enjoy it. Like, he obviously enjoys... This guy, I just realized, too. Like, this guy actually has a thong on underneath his pants. He's got a thong underneath his pants and a thong outside his pants. Holy cow. I haven't even been looking at the screen for the most part. I've been looking over at my laptop. But now, I just keep glancing over and seeing that now. And I can't unsee it. Um, but no, Balthier obviously could do really well in, like, a political machination sort of environment. But, like... I don't know, I feel like he's too sassy. I feel like he would need to be free, you know? He needs to be wandering the skies, but now he's already set up that he wants to give Vaughn his ship. So I'm like, if he gets a bash, he's gonna give Vaughn his ship. But what's Fran gonna do? Also, I think he still, he still should have given Fran his ship, especially if he stays behind. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> This is excessive. I'm just, it's so fun. There's just so many, there's just so many, and I guess maybe me speculating is a little silly because it's like, oh, it can go forward. But like, I don't know, this is what I do. I like to talk about video games and this is how I do it. So, yay. <laughs> okay, sorry, I should probably finish this. Lo, Vaughn, word from the resistance. The Imperial Sky Fortress Bahama is on the attack. Oh, I thought Bahama was like a dragon. This, this could be bad. We have no chance of fighting it from the ground. No, the only way to fight the Bahamut is to go to it by airship. Are we gonna have the airships with the hostess ladies? Because I need to give them letters. <laughs> the straw can now travel to Bahamut. Oh, sick. Dang. Um. I, they're gonna, why did they make me cross all the way across the city every time? I'm, well, I guess we'll freaking, we'll freaking call it there because it looks like that's not the final fight. We have, I, I forgot. I, I'm like, to me, like, Dr. Sid was like, Dr. Sid's going to be the final enemy. We have Vane going on over in the corner. Like, we still have another boss to fight. <laughs> I for, totally forgot about Vane. He's been doing all these machinations. Also, it is like 100 degrees in this room. I have all my, like, computer electronics going, and this room is poorly insulated, and it's so hot. <laughs> it's so hot right now. <laughs> but thank you all so much for joining me. I appreciate it. I don't know how long this one's going to be, so I hope it's fun. But thank you all so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons. To all my patrons. All of you. <laughs> including the acorns. So thank you. Oh, I almost said, hang on, the old the old name. I have to remember what the new name is. Fane. Fang, thank you so much for being an Acorn supporter on Patreon. I appreciate you very, very much. I also want to say thank you to Adam, my other Acorn tier patron. Thank you so much, my friend, for your support. I very much appreciate it. And I want to give an extra special shout out to Reese Galito, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so much for your support all this time. I really do appreciate it a lot. And yeah, thank you so much. So thank you all for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one.